Finally, 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 Samsung are jumping on board the Gen 5 train for real this time. Let's be honest, when they did start releasing a few devices in the Gen 5 series of SSDs, I think a lot of us, myself included, thought, a little bit lackluster. When we're looking at the 990 EVO and 990 EVO Plus, like this one here that we reviewed in the past, they were good, they performed exactly what Samsung would say, and the big downfall I think for a lot of users was they were rolling out with Gen 5 times 2 architecture there, and a lot of that was to do with the being DRAMless SSDs, but also Samsung were thinking, well, no one's really taking advantage of Gen 5 enough right now, and I think the market pretty much turned around and went, eh, no, you're wrong, everyone wants Gen 5 times 4, and we can deal with it with heat sinks and more. And finally, it looks like Samsung have woken up with the new Samsung 9 one zero zero pro ssd this is their new genuinely gen 5 times 4 ssd rocking out uh, with performance numbers that apparently are going to exceed that of even the fastest ssd in the market from crucial the t705 this ssd is promoting performance numbers of 14.8 um, over 13.4 gigabytes per second there. Again, we are getting so close to full saturation of Gen 5 times 4, it's unreal. Alongside that, it's walking out with their own in-house controller, in-house NAND, as you would expect from a Samsung SSD. And although formal release and availability has not yet been confirmed, we do know quite a lot from their own press releases. Arriving in one, two, four, and eight terabytes, these are 199, 299, 549, and the 8TB has still got its price TBC. So don't be surprised if the 8TB doesn't even arrive at launch. So wouldn't be the first time. ATB drives are always a little bit niche and generally you tend to find they get released later anyway. So again, although they're talking about it, it wouldn't surprise me if it doesn't arrive for a wee while yet. Now, we're still yet to get full confirmation on the controller and the NAND, but almost certainly it's going to be a variation of the Evo and Evo Plus uh, Piccolo controller there, alongside the 236-layer uh, V NAND, uh, 3D V NAND, that's already used in the other Gen 5 and even Gen 4 drives in some cases there. So again, very good stuff, uh, but again, we'll have to wait a little bit longer till we've actually got a drive here in the studio to talk more about the controller and the NAND. Alongside that, there is support of uh, LPDDR4 memory at 1, 2, 4, and 8 gig, respective to each of the individual capacities there. And durability has been rated at 600, 1200, 2400, and 4800 TBW. So again, you're looking at a drive rights per day of 0 0.328. Again, fairly standard on a Gen 5 drive when you think about the heaviness and the performance of those rights. It's still good they've maintained that number, but I still wouldn't use something like this in a network attached storage device. But still, nonetheless, for all their options, to more presumably AI driven or gaming audience, this is going to be fantastic. Now, in terms of performance, the 1TB and the 2TB are very similar at 14.7 gigabytes per second read and 13.3 gigabytes per second maximum write. Obviously, you're going to need some high end AMD 9 or something like that. And I think Intel chips will probably get quite close. And the 4TB and the 8TB are a pinch higher at 14.8 and 13.4 gig, respectively. There, now in terms of IOPS, um, again, very high numbers hitting into the millions 1.85 million. Uh, read IOPS and 2.6 million write IOPS and the 1 and the 2 and 2.2 million IOPS uh, read and 2.6 million IOPS write on the 4 and the 8 TB. Impressively though, it's the power uh, reported use there. Uh, active use at 7.6, 8.1 and 9 uh, watts utilization on the 1, 2 and 4 and still waiting for confirmation on the 8 TB there. So again, Comparatively low numbers for a Gen 5 times 4 drive there during active use. Obviously, we still need to wait for the idle passive numbers to be detailed. And just like other Samsung SSDs, it's going to roll out with full support in Samsung Magician. And of course, that turbo write, which acts as an area of SSD storage on the drive, acting as kind of pseudo write cache there to enhance those that performance. Obviously, if you exceed the area of space given to the turbo write, then it's not going to really be that uh, beneficial. So, for example, in the 1TB, it's 114 gig provided. So if you try to write a file that's larger than 114 gig, that's not going to be as beneficial because the idea is that the turbo write acts as a faster area of storage working as cache kind of like pseudo memory that goes in right to that and internally in the drive moving over to the additional storage it's not bolted on to the 1tb it's still using some of the 1tb 114 gig 
and you can't remove that, you can't disable it. You can expand it in the case of some drives in Samsung Magician, but you can't remove it entirely. So it's there to benefit you, and in the Gen 5 environment, it's still gonna help things, but just keep that in mind. But really, that's everything we know right now about the 9100 Pro Drive from Samsung. If Samsung have announced it, it means it must be coming in the very near future, and I can't wait to review it. I'm really glad that Samsung have now started using G real Gen 5 times 4 SSDs when literally every other SSD brand in the market is doing it. And of course, it's an in-house drive, and unsurprisingly, they are marketing it as the very fastest out there. Again, two years after everyone else has been launching these drives, there is a debate about whether everyone is thinking finally, or they're thinking a bit late to the party. I was really talking about Gen 6 SSDs, and I don't think you'd ever get that performance. But we are seeing uh, Gen 5 uh, SSD utilization with uh, modern CPUs actually getting better and better. And there is a heatsink version of this. We do have to talk about heat generation on a drive like this. But until we've got one in the studio, we just don't know enough. But that's everything we know right now about the Samsung 9100 SSD. If you want to learn more, there should be an article in the description that we'll update soon over on NAS Compares. And hopefully we'll have a device, uh, we'll have an SSD here for review. But apart from that, have yourselves a fantastic week.